In this video, I want to show you how you can combine your files in your Power BI reports and make sure that new columns are always included. We're going to go through this simple process step by step so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So combining multiple files into a single query is something that I've covered several times already in my channel. One of the main requirements of this solution is that all of the files format needs to be the same. So the number of columns need to be the same, the column names, the sheets, However, I had a situation in my workplace where these separate files might come in different formats or even new columns to be added. And they just want to make sure that these columns are always included in the final combination. So this prompted me to look for a solution online. For this, I want to credit Win Hopkins and Gil Raviv because this is actually their solution. And when I implemented it, it was super simple and I was just really stoked to, to see it work. So I just thought I'd cover it in a video just so that I can refer to it in the future. So let me show you first the situation. So here I have a screenshot of just the data just to show you sort of what the situation is. So what I have is a list of updates from my team, um, which is given by three different teams at the moment. So they give me updates on how they're doing with the project schedule progress. The task for me is to take those individual updates and combine them into one table so I can start doing some analysis on them. So as you can see, uh, we have a preview here of all of the tables. So team A, team B, team C. And for the most part, you know, their column headers are the same, they are in the same sheet, which is not a problem. You know, team A, B, and C, they have their own different tasks, their start dates and end dates. But you will notice that in some occasions, for example, team C don't doesn't have an approver because they don't need it. Or for example, approver email is not on team A because they don't need an email. And results that we wanted here is to make sure that regardless if there are no columns or if there are new columns in one, but not on the other, we kind of make sure that they are all integrated in one table. So today I wanna just show you first how you would typically combine the files and where it kind of, where the pitfalls. So let's open up our BI here and we're gonna go get data and hit more. We're going to select folder here because this is how you can combine files is from folders. So we're going to click team updates here, which is where we have our data and we'll just hit OK. And as you can see here, so we have those three files, team A, B and C. So we're going to go combine and transform to open up Power Query and we'll let kind of Power BI generate those helper functions for us. So here from this window, as you can see, this is where the first issue starts. So it's not really obvious at the moment, but basically for the combination to happen, invoke function needs to loop through a certain steps, like transform steps, and it needs to use a file as a sample file. So it's the, the format that it will follow to do on every single file that there is in this folder. Now, this file you can choose from this drop down here, which by default is the first file. Now, if all of your files in the folder are in the same formats, this shouldn't be a problem. However, because they are in different format, this kind of poses a problem. So we'll leave it as it is and we'll say sheet one and then we will hit OK. So it opened up a Power Query here. So here we are. So now this is our combined table from those three files. Now they are combined and simply just appended on top of each other because the first column that it got for each table is the column numbers, the column one, two, three, four. And as you can see, we can't really have the data like this because you have location underneath approver name. So we can't just filter and, and you know say that's good to go. So we're gonna need to first update the transform query. So for that, we're going to go to the transform sample file here, which is what Power BI pre-created for us. And this is the steps that I was talking about earlier. So for this one, we're just going to make sure that for every single file in this loop, 
it always promotes the first row as headers. So now if we go back to the team updates, that sort of looks more or less like it, right? But there are some issues with this. So this is where the kind of issue starts. So as you can see, we have team A, B, and Cs. We have all of their tasks. But if you notice, we have a few things missing. For example, the approver email doesn't exist here anymore. So approver email, even though it's in team B, this column doesn't exist here anymore. Other things like location, for example, it's not there anymore. And that's because it's following the format of the first file that you have put in the sample file, which is team A. So it's always following that structure. So we need to find a way to make that dynamic, find the column headers that we want to expand on and format them in a way that we will create and always create those new columns um, whenever they are included. So let's go through the steps that we need to do in order to fix this. So first of all, we need to go up one step where we remove the other columns. So this is like before we expand these tables, we instead of expanding it as new columns here, we're going to go right click and drill down. It will remove the expand table column step. So that's fine. So we'll just hit continue and we'll just convert this into a list of tables. So as you can see in each of these tables, you have all of your data which is fine. We're going to come back to this later. But for now, our first step needs to be to list out all of the column headers on all of these tables so that we can make sure that we are always defining them in the final result. That was a bit of a mouthful, but just follow me for now. So just imagine that we need to get the list of column headers, right? So in this list, what we're going to do is we're just going to simply transform this list into a list of column headers. So we're going to convert this. We're going to say lists that transform. And then at the end, we're going to just say each table that column names. And then inside the open and close brackets, underscore and that's it so you can see that there is now in that every single row has a list of the column headers right and now what we just need to make sure that we need to do is to create a union of all of this information so we're going to do wrap it around another list list that union and uh Close it and here you go. So now you have a list of all the unique column headers of all of your files in your folder. So including the location, the approver email, which we were missing earlier, basically all of the column headers. And we're going to reference this again later when we need to expand the data. So for now, we're going to need to go back to that previous step of having all of those lists. So we're going to create a new step here. And for this step, we're going to just change the this and reference the removed other column. So this is the one before we expanded the data. And then from here, what we're going to do is simply expand. And uh, as you can see, it will make give us a list here. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to hit OK for now. Now we have that information kind of expanded. The problem is that because it's referencing the column headers by name, if in the future we add new columns, it will ignore them and only expand on these. So we just want to make sure that everything that is within these curly brackets is dynamic and is based on a dynamic list that is always generated. Now, luckily, we've already done that, which is the one that we, we did just a step ago. So what I'm gonna, going to do is everything within these curly brackets, I'm just going to delete them and then I'm going to reference that custom, sorry, the transform file should really should have really named this. So from here, I, I got an error here because I was putting them in a curly bracket, but they're actually already a list already. So I'm just going to remove the curly brackets here and just say expand using the lists of column headers from the step that we've created. And there you go. So now from here onwards, Every time you add a new column header 
from as a new file in this folder, it will always be included in this final list of combined table. And that's really it for this video. I hope that solution was as useful to you as it was for me. And once again, I just want to give a shout out to Win Hopkins and Gil Ravu for this really amazing solution. I think it solves a lot of my problems. I mean, it's one less thing to think about when it comes to kind of data organization. So I'll leave a link to their blog post and the video, the original video in the description box below so you can check them out. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.